you ask 10 people on the street, what does AD stand for? Most people would answer, after death. AD means however many years after the death of Jesus Christ. But no, you fool. It's actually Ad Dominici, which is Latin for in the year of our Lord. If BC is before Christ and AD is after Christ, then that would mean there's a period of about 30 years when Jesus was alive that's called during Christ? That'd be hilarious, and I fully support that. I hope all history scientists watching are taking notes. But without further ado, here are a few historical misconceptions that you probably still believe. Starting with number one. Isaac Newton was never bonked on the head by an apple. The story goes, Newton was sitting under an apple tree, feeling kind of sad about how he hasn't discovered gravity yet. Then out of nowhere, thunk. An apple falls from the sky, smacks him in the head, and boom, there's the law of gravity. Well, I'm sorry to say, but you, yes, you, have been lied to. The only thing that Newton said about it was that he was sitting in a contemplative mood, and his thinking was occasioned by the fall of an apple. Number two. Sorry to crush your dreams of giant kraken or portals to other dimensions, but the Bermuda Triangle isn't different from any other part of the ocean. Every mysterious disappearance can be chalked up to human error or storms. The idea of the Bermuda Triangle only exists to provide clickbait to YouTubers and headlines for tabloids. Number 3. The Mafia never executed people by putting their feet in cement blocks and dropping them into the ocean. While it's a cool idea, why waste effort and resources setting up an artful and distinguished execution when you can just... Pew pew. Number 4. Question. Which of the following images are cowboys? You may think it's this guy. Maybe this one. The correct answer is actually all of them. Were you fooled by their lack of distinctive cowboy hat? Same. But it turns out, cowboys didn't wear cowboy hats. That idea was popularized in movies around the early 1900s. Instead, they wore hats that looked more like sombreros than anything else. Look at this pancake looking thing. Number 5. Although the guillotine was named after Joseph Ignace Guillotin, I apologize deeply to all French people watching, he was at no point in his life executed by his own creation, no matter how poetic that may seem. Instead, he died in 1854, in his bed, of natural causes. I mean, come on, dude. Not that I'm complaining, but like, imagine how cool that would have been. Number 6. Pirates are not shown correctly in movies at all. Most weren't born into the trade as seasoned veterans that had a love of robbery. Instead, they were just unemployed sailors who turned to less than legal means of acquiring coin. In the case of a successful robbery, most would just retire or go into hiding with the riches. If you think about it, imagine you just pulled off an insane heist and robbed an important ship holding $2 million in gold. Would you then go back out and try to do it again? Unless you're clinically insane, no. You would take your riches and run. Number 7. Napoleon Bonaparte wasn't short. French measurements had him at 5 foot 2 feet, but he was actually 5 foot 7 in English feet. His nickname was the Little Corporal, but that was somehow unrelated to his size. One thing that may have led to this was the fact that he hired his elite bodyguards based on their size, so he was always standing next to people much taller than him. That's like calling this 5 foot 7 dude short because he's standing next to a 7 foot 2 basketball player. The widespread belief that Napoleon was short actually comes from British propaganda, and it was strangely incredibly effective. I don't know why they ever stopped. Like, imagine the US just did that to people they didn't like. Like, hey, did you hear Kim Jong Un's actually 3 foot 9? And then everyone just believed it forever. Number 8. If you're American, you may have heard of a young chap named Paul Revere who rode through town and hollered, the British are coming, to warn of the British invasion or something. But that's not what he said. Saying the British are coming would have been really confusing to the colonists, who were mostly British. He actually said, the regulars are coming. Also, side note, he was a patriot, sure. But he was also a guy with a job. So after his gloriously heroic ride, he still got paid. I think this picture I found on BuzzFeed sums it up nicely. Number 9. The idea that gladiators were slaves. No, they're actually very celebrated heroes, like the sports people of today. Also, a gladiator fight wasn't a glorious fight to the death, ending in one guy stabbing the other through his throat. That would be stupid. You don't spend a ton of time and money training up one dude to perform in front of thousands of people, and then that's it, and he's dead. No, they usually fight for a bit, put on a show, then when one of them lands a few cuts on the other, the fight may be called and they can leave. Of course, about 1 in 10 gladiator fights ended in a death regardless, since sports that end with a sword through your left kidney aren't considered to be too beneficial to your health. 
Number 10. Vikings never wore horns on their helmets. Yeah, that'd just be stupid. General rule of thumb, don't give your enemy handles to grab you by or to remove your armor via. It's not known to end favorably. The best thing they would do for you is weigh your head down. If you've ever wondered who the craziest Roman Emperor is, click on this video to find out. And if you made it this far, subscribe.